Hi guys, I hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to be solving the project for day 6 in 30 days of Python. If you haven't been following the series, check out the link in the description of this video. Every day for the past 6 days, we've been posting one blog post a day with Python content and exercises and some projects as well. If you're wanting to learn how to code, or maybe you've got some friends that want to learn how to code, please send them to this series. It's for beginners, and we've got a lot planned for the rest of the 30 days. All right, let's get started with today's project. Today's project is FizzBuzz, which means that we are going to be printing out the numbers from 1 to 100, but every time that the number is divisible by 3, for example, 3, 6, 9, 12, etc., we're going to print fizz every time a number is divisible by 5, such as 5, 10, 20, 30, etc. We're going to print buzz. And every time a number is divisible by both 3 and 5, we're going to print fizz buzz. For example, 15, 30, 45. And so the output is going to look something like this. And so on. So we've got 1, 2, fizz, 4, buzz, fizz, 7, 8, fizz, buzz. Um, so, how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing we have to acknowledge is we want to go from 1 to 100. So we need a range of numbers that are a list of numbers that we can go over. One option is to create the list yourself. You can say numbers equal, and then just start typing. 1, 2, 3, but you can see already I'm making mistakes, so this is probably not going to be the right solution. Instead, we're going to use the range function that we have already learned about, to construct our numbers. Here I've constructed a range of numbers from 1 to 100, but remember that the second number in range is exclusive, so it's not going to be included in the final collection of numbers, so we need to go to 101 instead to generate numbers from 1 to 100. Now, we can print this out, but remember that when we print this, when we print the range out, we're going to get this lazy thing that doesn't actually provide us with the numbers themselves. If you wanted to print the numbers out, you would have to turn this into a list first, and that then gives you all the numbers, and you can print them out, and you can look at them. We start at 1, we go to 100. I won't check the ones in the middle. I'm sure they're correct. Okay, now that we've got the range, we can iterate over it using a for loop, as we have learned. The reason why we do that is because we want to do something with each number. The thing we want to do with each number is check whether they're divisible by 3 or 5 and print them out. So that's why we're going to use a for loop to give us each number in the sequence. So we'll do for number in range 1 to 101. Notice that I've used the range here directly in the for loop instead of using my numbers variable, but you could use the numbers variable instead if you want. I find this a little bit clearer, and that means that we don't need this numbers variable anymore because that value is generated when this expression is evaluated. And so now inside the body of the for loop, remembering to indent appropriately, that's with four spaces, we can print the number, for example, and that's going to tell us whether we've got the right content so far. Notice that when we printed the numbers list earlier on, we get the square brackets and the commas and so forth. Now we're printing each number separately, so we should just get the numbers themselves. And you can see that that's what we get indeed. Now we need to start filtering out numbers that we don't want to print. So we will start with uh, the numbers divisible by 3. How might you check if a number is divisible by 3? Well, the easiest way is to divide the number by 3 and see if there is a remainder in the division. And if there is, then the number is not divisible. And if there isn't, the number is divisible. For example, 6 divided by 2 has no remainder. Um, but 6 divided by 4 does have a remainder of 2. So we are going to check for the remainder of a division. And the way you do that is with the modulus operator or the modulo operator. So we'll say if number percentage 3 is equal to 0, and here is where the magic happens. This gives us the remainder of the division of number divided by 3. For example, number divided by 3 has a remainder of 1, and that is what this would evaluate to. 1 equal equal 0 is false, so this if statement would not run, or the body of this if statement would not run. But if it did, then we would want to print fizz. 
otherwise we would want to print the number. So now when we run this, you'll see that every multiple of three, uh, when we clear the output and run this again, of course, is in fact fizz. So we've got fizz, 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 fizz. Every three numbers. A couple of things to remember when you're doing something like this, print fizz is indented four spaces more than the if statement, but of course eight spaces more than the for loop because all of this is inside the loop and this is inside the if statement. Also the indentation of the if and the else must be the same for them to be together. I'm sure you already know all about this. All right, now that we've got this, we can do something similar for divisible by five. So we'll do elif number uh, divisible by five will print buzz. And now we're going to get the same stuff, but for our uh, fizz and buzz and so forth. So we've got that here. One, two, fizz, buzz, and so forth. So now comes the final part, which is printing fizz and buzz if the number is divisible by both three and five. A way you might do that, you might want to nest an if statement. You can put an if statement in here and print fizz buzz. And this is an option. You can say if the number is divisible by three, then you're going to run this block of code. And in here, you're checking if the number is divisible by five. And then you're going to run this block. So this here will only run if the number was divisible by three and by five. If the number was not divisible by five, though, then we will have an else statement here that prints fizz. Otherwise, if the number was not divisible by three, we will jump into this elif and evaluate it and maybe print buzz. So if we run this, you'll see that we get the correct answer. Fizzbuzz is printed out in 15 and then in 30 and so on. However, I find this a little bit confusing. There's a few too many levels of nesting. So I would encourage you to not do something like this. The other option is that you might check yourself whether the number is divisible by 15. After all, a number divisible by both 3 and 5 is divisible by 15, and that's what actually gives us the fizz buzz. And so we can do elif number is divisible by 15 is equal to 0, and then we print fizz buzz. And so will this work? If we run this, I'm actually going to clear this output. Repolit has been acting up a little bit lately. Um, so if we print this out, you'll see that we get no fizz buzzes anywhere. And the reason for that is because, as you can probably remember from the blog post content, if statements that are joined together like this, like if, elif, elif, else, only ever run one of the branches. Uh, so either this one is going to run, or this one is going to run, or this one. And as soon as one of them runs, the others get ignored. And uh, so what's happening here is all the numbers that are divisible by 15 were divisible by 3 anyway, so this had run for each number. That's why at 15, for example, we get fizz, and so we do at 30. So the order of these is actually really important. What we want to do is we want to put this at the top and this as an elif. And when we do that, we're going to check for 15 first, then for 3, and then for 5, and that is now going to work, but I'm going to have to clear this output first. There you go, now we get fizzbuzz there. Now, dividing by 15 here is pretty neat, but there are actually other ways that we could do this using conditionals, the conditional words and and or that allow us to combine multiple checks together. For example, we could check whether a number is divisible by 3 and by 5. We're going to look at that in the blog post, so make sure to click the link in the description to read our solution blog post, and we've got some extra material there for you. We've also got a few blog posts linked in the blog post that you may find interesting, so do make sure to check that out. Other than that, though, I hope you were able to complete this challenge, this project, successfully, and I hope to see you tomorrow for day seven, where we've got one more project for you as well. So I'll see you there.